Okay guys, so far we have seen that Electron has two types of processes, a main process and a renderer process. An Electron app can have one main process and one or more renderer processes. Now sometimes the renderer process might want to invoke a native desktop API. For example, the dialog box to display an error message or the dialog box to open a file, save a file and so on. Now when the web page or the browser window has access to these native APIs, it is considered dangerous. The resources might be leaked. So to handle this, Electron has the IPC module. IPC stands for Interprocess Communication and in our case, the communication is between the main process and the renderer process. So let me explain the general concept behind IPC and then we can see a demo on how to implement it in our Electron application. Let us consider the example where the renderer process has to display an error message in the browser window. So to achieve that using IPC, here's what we are going to do. The renderer process sends out an event open error dialog to the main process. The main process should be listening to this particular event open error dialog. And when it catches that event, it will show the dialog by calling the native API. So the renderer process sends a message to the main process and the main process calls the native desktop API. And the main process can also reply to the renderer process that sends out a message. So it sends out an event opened error dialog back to the renderer process. And in the renderer process, we need to listen to opened error dialog and capture the arguments and perform any operation. Or in our simple example, we're just going to log the reply from the main process. So that is the basic IPC flow in Electron. The renderer process sends out an event to the main process. The main process then calls the native desktop APIs. And then the main process can reply back to the renderer process and the renderer process can listen to that particular event and perform some operations. All right, with this understanding, let's take a look at the demo now. Again, we are going to start with the basic hello world project. In the package.json file, I have changed the name to IPC and index.html, I've changed the title and the heading to IPC. The first thing we are going to do is within the body tag, add script and over here, we are going to require index.js. So let's create this index.js, which runs in the renderer process. So index.js. Next, we import the IPC modules in both the main and the renderer processes. So in main.js, we're going to say const IPC is equal to electron.ipc main. And similarly, in index.js, we're first going to require electron const IPC is equal to electron.ipc renderer. Next, we are going to add a button in our HTML file. And when we click this button, we want an error dialog box to pop up. So just below the H1 tag, add a button. Let's give this an ID and this is going to be error button. And then the text is going to be display error. Next in index.js, we are going to listen to the click event on that button and send out an event to the main process to display the error dialog box. So over here, const error button is equal to document dot get element by ID error button. And then we're going to say error button dot add event listener. This is going to be a click event and then a function to execute. And within the function, we are going to use the IPC module. So IPC dot send and then the name of the event. So I'm going to say open error dialog. So now we are sending an event from the renderer process to the main process. Next in the main process, we are going to listen to the event and display the dialog box. So to display dialog box, first we need to make use of the module from Electron. So const dialog is equal to electron.dialog. And then to listen to that event, we are going to use the IPC module. So it is going to be IPC dot on, and then the name of the event. So it is going to be open 
adder dialog and then the function. Now this function has event as a parameter and in the body of this function we are going to say dialog dot show error box. Now this takes in two arguments. The first one is a title. Let's give this an error message and then a body. So demo of an error message. All right, so what we have done so far is we have sent a message open error dialog from the renderer process and we have captured that event open error dialog and we are executing this function. And what this function does is it shows the error dialog box. So let's run this and test it out. So open the integrated terminal, navigate to the project directory, run npm install if you haven't already, and then run npm start. So if you have a look at the UI, we have our h1 tag IPC, and we also have our button display error. Now when I click on this button, you can see that we have an error dialog box. The title is an error message, and then the body is demo of an error message and I can click on OK. So we are able to communicate from the renderer process to the main process. Now let's do it the other way. Let's send a message from the main process to the renderer process on the same event. So we are replying to the open error dialog event. So I'm going to close this and to reply to this particular event, Within the function body, we are going to say event.sender.send. Then we are going to reply with the name of the event or the channel. And this is going to be opened error dialog. And then a message to the renderer process. So we can say main process open the error dialog. And in the index.js file, let's capture that particular event. So ipc.on opened error dialog and then a function. Now this function is going to again have event as well as arguments and let's just log this argument. Now this argument is basically the reply from the main process. Let me quickly summarize the flow. From index.js we are going to say ipc.send open error dialog. So this event is being sent from the renderer process to the main process. So in the main process, we listen to open error dialog and then actually show the error message. So the title is an error message and the body is demo of an error message. Now to reply back to this event, we have the event argument. So event.sender. So who is the sender of this event? This particular renderer process. So to this sender, send back a message. So this is the channel on which I will be communicating. So open error dialog and this is the message that I want to send. So back in index.js, we are going to listen on open error dialog, which is basically this right here. And then we also get access to the argument, which is nothing but the message that we have sent from the main process to the renderer process. And we are just logging in to see if it works. So now when I run npm start, and I'm going to click on view toggle developer tools. And now when I click on display error message, I get the error message. And when I click on OK, we get the reply main process open the error dialog. So we are sending a message from the render process to the main process and a reply back from the main process to the render process. This is IPC or inter process communication. We have the main process and the renderer process communicating with each other. Now when it comes to IPC, there are two types, asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous IPC does not block other operations, whereas synchronous IPC blocks other operations while completing its tasks. So let's understand with a very basic demo, the non-blocking versus blocking nature of asynchronous and synchronous IPC. I'm going to close this. And the error dialog example we just saw is in fact an example of asynchronous IPC. I'm going to make some minor adjustments so that we can relate to the example better. 
In index.html, I'm going to change the ID from error button to async button. In main.js, I'm going to say instead of open error dialog, async message. Instead of open error dialog, it is going to be async reply. And in index.js, we're going to change error button to async button, open error dialog to async message, and open error dialog to async reply. And in the main process, we don't really want to open an error dialog box anymore. This was just for understanding IPC. All right, so our main and renderer processes are communicating. Now to show that they're asynchronous, I'm just going to add two console.logs. So in index.js, just before sending this asynchronous message, I'm going to log to the console, async message one, and right after sending the asynchronous message, I'm going to say async message two to the console. So now let's run this and test the output. So npm start. I'm going to open developer tools and then I'm going to click on display error. So if you have a look in the console, the order of messages, we first get message one, then message two, and then the asynchronous message reply. In our code, however, IPC is between message one and message two. But because this is asynchronous, the IPC code does not block other operations. So the renderer process sends out a message to the main process and then allows the next line to be executed. So that is why message one and message two appear first. And then when the asynchronous reply is received, it is logged to the console. Let's contrast this with synchronous IPC. So in index.html, I'm going to create a new button. This is going to be synchronous button. And I'm also going to change this to async and sync. And in index.js, we are going to add a similar event handler. So sync button dot add event listener on click. We're going to say sync message one, sync message two, and make sure you also get a reference to the sync button. So const sync button is equal to document dot get element by ID sync button. And then sending and receiving a reply using synchronous is slightly different. So instead of just ipc.send, here's how the syntax is going to be. We're going to say const reply is equal to ipc.sendSync and then sync message. And then we're going to say console.log reply. And in the main process over here, I'm going to say IPC dot on sync message this time. We're going to have a function. This is going to have an event and we're going to say event dot return value is equal to sync reply. So the syntax is slightly different for synchronous versus asynchronous. So for synchronous, we're going to capture the reply in the same line as we are sending out the particular event. So we say ipc.sensync sync message. It goes to the main process. We receive or listen to the sync message. And then we say a return value for that particular event. So this is going to be sync reply, which gets assigned to the reply and then logged in the console. Let's run this and have a look at the output. So npm start, I'm gonna to toggle developer tools again, and I'm gonna click on sync button. So if you have a look now, the order of execution is exactly the same as our code. We have message one and then the reply and then message two. This is because synchronous IPC blocks execution till it completes. So till it logs that reply, the next line will not be executed. So let me also click on async button where you can see that message one, message two, and then the reply is logged. So the order is different for asynchronous versus synchronous because of the non-blocking versus blocking nature. So that is about synchronous and asynchronous IPC in Electron. And one last thing that I need to speak about is the remote module. 
Now we learned that to invoke native APIs, IPC is required between the main and the renderer process. But Electron also provides the remote module to make it simpler. With the remote module, you can invoke methods of the main process object without explicitly sending inter-process messages. Now in one of the earlier videos about the main and the renderer process, we saw that we could create a browser window from the renderer process using the remote module. Let's recollect. So in index.js, I can type const browser window is equal to require electron dot remote dot browser window. And then I can type let window is equal to new browser window and then window dot load URL, the link to GitHub. So if I run the application now, npm start, we get two browser windows. This browser window was created in the main process and this browser window was created from the renderer process. Now what happens is each object returned by this remote module represents an object in the main process. So this browser window is actually from the main process. And when you invoke methods of a remote object, you're actually sending synchronous inter-process messages. So in the example here, both browser window and window are remote objects and new browser window did not create a browser window object in the renderer process. Instead, it created a browser window object in the main process and returned that corresponding remote object in the renderer process, namely this particular window object. And this happens with synchronous IPC. So when we run this application, the renderer process will create the new browser window with the help of the main process using synchronous IPC. Now you might ask then why do we need IPC at all if it is handled internally? We could just use the remote module. Now keep in mind the remote module handles IPC synchronously. So there might be occurrences when you're actually having nothing on your screen because of the blocking nature of synchronous IPC. So as much as possible, stick to asynchronous IPC in Electron. All right, so that is pretty much about IPC and make sure you get a good understanding of IPC because it is a very important concept in Electron. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.